so we're doing the dishes today and when you have we stuff, do the dishes every day yeah <laughs> but when you have stuff that's burnt on like this burnt on rice it takes a lot of water to get it off and as you can see i have the water just running constant sounds ridiculous to do on a boat where water's rationed but it's salt water so i set it up so that the hot faucet is actually raw water or seawater and the cold faucet is fresh water. So what I do is I wash with salt water, get everything super clean, rinse it all off with salt water, and then at the very end, I rinse it in fresh water to get the salt off. So I use pretty much no fresh water in cleaning the dishes. Now, it's a great system, but there's a couple things you need to make sure. So in a boat, you have the keel in the middle. So you wanna make sure that the water inlet and water outlet are on opposite sides of the keel. So in our case, the galley drains to starboard and the intake is on the port side. Because otherwise, all the funk that's coming out the galley sink, you're gonna suck right back up if you have them on the same side. So, a little tidbit there. But yeah, it's great. So I get to scrub away and clean with as much water as I need. And then when we're done, then we just do the final rinse with fresh. It's a gorgeous, gloomy morning here in Deltaville, Virginia. Right now it seems like high pressure systems are playing like tag over us and it's just, it's horrible. And So I'm just feeling very frustrated right now because we seem to have chosen the wrong year to do this. We're still going to do it, uh, but everything is just taking twice as long as we thought it would because the weather is just insane and we are not going to leave until it is safe. That's just how it is. But our original plan was to have left at the end of August, um, very latest early September, and here we are, mid-October, still here. And it's just, it's frustrating because, you know, we, I quit my job, Kirby put his career on hold, and we're not making any money right now. Uh, we saved up enough for us to do this for a year, and so far most of the year has been spent just waiting for the opportune moment to leave. And money aside, it's, it's mostly just frustrating because we're just sitting here, we're stuck. Like, the boat is ready to go. We have done everything we can to get it ready to go. If we had to leave tomorrow, we could. If we had to leave right now, we could. Um, but there's only so much you can do to prepare. I mean, we are, we are ready, and we are just at the mercy of the weather right now. Just waiting, 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 stuck here in Deltaville, where there it's a nice marina, but there is nothing here. Nothing here. There's no movie theater. Bowling alley. I don't know what. I don't know what people do here. I mean, well, the answer is they have cars and they go to someplace else. <laughs> we don't have a car. So that's kind of where I stand right now. Just frustrated excited beyond belief to go, but it puts a damper on that excitement when each day it seems like you're pushing back your date, your departure date, by a few days. <laughs> so, hopefully we'll be able to leave soon, but right now we're just kind of bored. I woke up at 2 p.m and watched a documentary about how everything I'm eating is poisonous. <laughs> so that might be also why I'm in a bad mood. But, uh, just, I guess, pray for good weather. Hope for good weather. And, uh, we'll be out of here soon. It's just, it's frustrating. A lot of you guys mentioned concern about the chimney being so close to the rack for the dinghy and then the dinghy itself. Uh, I wasn't so concerned at the time because it was summer. So the fire has been burning for a while. So it's 
really nice and hot, so the glass is 550. The top of the heater is 500. And you can see the chimney starts getting cooler progressively as you go further up. So, let's go outside and see how hot everything is. We're about 120. And these little pieces of wood, that guy's 100. That guy's 84, so neither are near ignition point, which is around 450 for wood. And our carpet is 80s to 90s. I'm putting 2x4s across the frame we put here. That way we can mount the dinghy upside down. That way, with them upside down, there's no risk of them getting filled by a boarding wave. The other project I'm doing is up here on the forepeak. So, I've added grease to this guy, and that silenced him a lot because it's supposed to be two-thirds of the way full with grease. And the way you're supposed to do that is you are supposed to remove it, turn it upside down, and then pour the grease in to submerge all the gears and grease. The problem is, it's been sitting on this deck for probably 30 years, and it's really stuck. <laughs> the other issue is, I don't know if they even make the gasket that holds all the grease in there anymore. So I run the risk of breaking the gasket, which would probably happen after all these years, and then not being able to keep the grease in and just making a whole host of issues. So. Uh, the side way around it, what I've done is I've actually injected grease through these ports. So I take out the bolts that hold it, I kind of slide this thing forward, and then I just force grease in there. So I was able to grease up this bottom gear, uh, and that really cut down on the noise, but the top gear is still dry and still really noisy. So I've tried a couple things to get enough space to get in there, but it just, it won't let me. So I'm gonna try one last ditch effort, which is where I'll take the bolt out, and then I'm going to pretty much make a grease coupler adapter that'll thread in over here. So I'll be able to pop the bolt in, and then hook the grease gun to it, and then plunge all the grease right in there. So that's the goal for today, is to make that adapter. The setup's pretty simple. What I'm gonna do is I got a cheap regular bolt and I'm going to drill, tap, and then screw in a Zerks fitting in the top of the head here where there's a lot of meat. And then I'm going to bore out down the shaft with a very thin drill and that'll be the passageway where the grease can flow. Then after everything's been drilled and all, I simply cut the threads off and cut it short and then with this nut that's on here, I unthread, I unthread it. So, that's the plan, and we'll turn this regular bolt into a grease coupler. So I clamped the, a little work vise that we carry in the boat that just clamps onto anything. So it's an instant portable vise. This is actually from Maddie's grandfather. Uh, so I clamped it on here, and I put the bolt in there, and I've drilled the top. Uh, it's a smaller hole than what we actually need, that way we can tap it and put threads in it, and then screw the Zerks fitting into that guy. So now that we have the top drilled out, before we put the threads in, I'm actually going to bore the hole through the whole thing, or partially through the thing, and then we'll cut it off with a hacksaw. It's going to exit. So ideally you want to have a drill press for this, or be a dentist and used to drilling holes in tiny little places. got the top drilled and tapped, so now I'm going to flip it over and put in the vise and then we're going to cut the screw short. And then with that we'll have a uh, little grease coupler. With the other end cut off, you can see the hole there. So the hole's pretty much in the center. I did this freehand, but I'm also a dentist so I'm really used to drilling tiny holes and tiny things. So. I don't suggest doing this with a hand drill. I highly recommend doing this with a drill press. That way you can get the hole centered and keep it lined up. You can see, I'm even a little off. I didn't even get it dead centered. So the reason I have this nut on here is a couple reasons. One, it gives me a bigger surface to grab in the vise. But the other reason is now that I cut it off, these threads at the end are destroyed. So when I remove this nut, it's actually gonna refresh the threads and then it'll be able to thread into the windlass a lot easier. Now on the deck, I've lashed on some 2x4s. So they're on nice and tight with uh, just a little seizing nut. Now, 
the idea of these is that it'll just hold it in place upside down. So the, we want space for the chimney to be able to vent and the heat shield and all that. And we also want the dinghy to be out of the way, that way we can get air through the hatch and be upside down so it doesn't A, fill with rain or B, uh, get filled by a boarding wave, which God forbid we don't get one of those, but you never know. So We're having a date night. I yep. thought it would boost morale. Yeah, it's been pretty rainy and dreary for days. So, yeah. Yeah. do a little special something for ourselves. <laughs> it helps to get yourself dressed and actually put on makeup. And shave. <laughs> Sometimes. <laughs> We're going to the only nice restaurant within miles. <laughs> It's called The Table, and it's a pretty classy joint. So we're going to bike there because there's no Uber out here in this tiny town. And hopefully we'll arrive still looking somewhat dapper. <laughs> it's respectable. Yes. <laughs> Not like homeless people from a boat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so good things. So off we go. So I, uh, it's Sunday and I woke up to some good news from Herbie. We will hopefully be able to get out of here by Wednesday uh, or Thursday, Friday at the latest. So as the weather stands right now, that is what we're looking at and that brings hope. Um, for now, I'm going to hang out in the hammock and start a new book. I'm going to read Wonder now. I've heard a lot of really good things about it and actually went to a talk from the author. So. Super excited. So I checked the weather this morning and it looks like tomorrow by 11 a.m. at the latest we'll be casting off and setting sail south. Uh, so it's going to be quite an adventurous day today. We have to get a lot done. We're going to get breakfast with a neighbor that just came in. And then we got to run to a bunch of stores, do some last minute stuff that we need to do. And then we're out of here. So it's a... Uh, gonna be an epic day leading up to a really epic day <laughs> so the weather has been regularly cold and bad here and there's finally a weather window where we're gonna slip out so tomorrow in the Chesapeake we're looking at uh, some pretty good winds during the day and it's also gonna be in the 50s so we don't want to deal with that so then the next day on Wednesday the winds are much lighter and it's a smidge warmer. So because of wind chill, we shouldn't freeze to death. So our plan is we're going to leave uh, leave the Chesapeake on Wednesday with the light winds. We'll come out into the ocean and then we're just going to skirt down heading south because how the winds are blowing this direction right now, the Gulf Stream is blowing up. And when you have wind over current, it turns into hell and you don't want that. So, we're not able to cross the Gulf Stream when the wind's blowing in this direction. So what we're going to do is we're going to ride the counter current, which runs right next to the Gulf Stream, south. So as we head further south, uh, it gets warmer, and we get away from these horrible winter gales that are just rolling through all the time. So, at some point, when the weather's good and we're able to cross, we'll cross the Gulf Stream and come over to this tiny little dot over here, which is Bermuda. If, for any reason, we need more supplies or whatever, we can just turn right and pop into any port along the East Coast, because we'll be within the Gulf Stream. And if we cross the Gulf Stream and it looks really snotty heading out towards Bermuda, we have a backup plan, which is to just head further south and stop at the Bahamas, wait for good weather, and then shoot up to Bermuda. So, either way, we're leaving on Wednesday. So we're going to be getting the boat ready the rest of this afternoon and tomorrow, because today's Monday. And then we'll be making our way offshore. So we got to make this chicken uh, before we leave. Therefore, tonight I'm making wraps. Chicken wraps. And it's going to be great. And they're super easy. It's my mom's recipe. She made it up. Right. So what you do is you just uh, pour some dressing, vinaigrette, or I like to do zesty Italian, into a bowl. Cut chicken into bite-sized pieces, let it rest in the bowl, and 
Uh, then pour all of the contents into the pan, let it cook, and then add pepper and red onion. Then you put it in a wrap and you add sour cream and it's delicious. a few weeks before we can get out our next video due to the lack of internet access on the ocean, but the good news is we will be able to give you our video about crossing to Bermuda next time, and there will be bonus footage for those of you who have signed up to be a patron on Patreon. Thanks so much for watching, and if you want to become a sailing buddy, you can click the link down below to our Patreon account. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our channel. And when you click subscribe, make sure you click on the little bell in the annotation. That way you get notifications as soon as our next video is uploaded. Thanks so much.